Hello, it's a duty paid and today we're taking a look at another typewriter and a particularly nice one. Here we have a Olympia. Now I was over a general auction the other day and this was just listed as a early Olympia typewriter. So I had to go over and have a look and lo and behold I found this one which came in its original um, wooden carry case which is sort of covered in paper and a particularly nice example as well. It must have been one owner from new and uh, from new it was quite old coming up now so let's have a look at this and give it a quick spin around i haven't touched this one i've only literally got it in the last couple of days and had a quick look at it and i will sort of point out a couple of the um, things that need attention but there's not particularly much on this one that will need work let's spin around to the back first and the back was hidden by the, uh, it comes in a case which has two um, locking sort of mechanisms either side which stops the uh, typewriter from sort of flinging around in the case. So we have the Olympia Work which is West and GmbH, I think that's similar to sort of Limited, I'm not 100% sure. Wilhelm Schaven, Schaven. <laughs> sorry for my German pronunciation if you're uh, watching German if, if you're watching in Germany even um, Model and SM2 which unfortunately the really 2 is slightly rubbed off but definitely SM2 which I will explain in a minute made in Western Germany because obviously the uh, wall was up Martin. actually for the year which I will tell you in a second I'm not sure if the wall was fully built at this time a little um, dealer's plaque which is Olympia Office Machine Sales Limited, 20 Bride Lane, London EC4. Sole importers and distributors. So, back in the day, it's probably the only place you could get that. I've checked on Google Maps and looks like the building's gone now. There's um, 18 to 20 Bride House, so I, which by the architecture doesn't look like it was around in this time. Now, checking on the um, serial number of this one, it looks to have been made in around about February 1951. So, we're in 60, in 15 now, so now it's 64 years old. So, quite an old machine. It's in this sort of lovely um, dark red, sort of, sort of reminds me of the old Oxblood, sort of wrinkled paint, or wrinkle paint. It's sort of a, on North London in me, Winkle. So a few features of this machine. It's for when this machine was made, they really got typewriter manufacturer down. You know, it, it, a lot of features on this you will see in earlier machines, and then going right through to sort of last production almost in the 90s and changing. So we have a four-row keyboard in the normal uh, QWERTY fashion. English machine with the uh, pound symbol and the at is there then one quarter three quarters one eighth three eighths five eighths seven eighths percentage and half um, have backspace margin release a two shifts and a shift lock here we have a lever that does the carriage release normally they're on um, especially on later Olympias it's at the top it's a little switch but they can be anywhere, sometimes they're on the um, left hand side, sometimes on the right hand side. But this one literally pulls forward and that releases the carriage and releases the shift as well. The shift is a single sided mechanism, no bar across, with one of the sweetest shift lock mechanisms that I've ever encountered. The, you know, after 61 years, just flicks down and stays down. Um, it's a two color machine with black stencil and red chosen by this little lever here. Going around to the side of the machine you have a um, these pattern knobs and then you have the pattern release knob which allows you to manually feed to the correct point. You have the carriage release lever here and you have the uh, paper table release handle here 
which actually lifts up the paper baler at the same time. So particularly nice mechanism that side. Going around the back of the machine you have the two um, temperature marks for margin and then a very nice little pull out paper rest. Don't know if that's picking up a little bit out of shot but it's a sort of almost double height one and there's some beautiful engine turning on the inside of that. Coming around to the side another pattern knob you have the um, advance normal mechanism here it's sort of disengage and then one one and a half and two and then you have this secondary knob down here which is quite I haven't really seen this before it's a small one to allow you to manually feed the roller without it uh, sort of being on the sort of ratchets which is quite an example particularly long um, carriage return arm and advance here a real sort of nice sort of finger catch on top so you sort of type in and then you can catch you know some are practically sort of half a height of this all sticking out and also this is fixed so there's no trouble of scratching the um, top of the casing when it passes over the um, top cover lifts up from the front which is a little bit fiddly but it's sort of almost like a uh, sort of car bonnet it makes it quite handy for um, typing machine is sort of dirty but certainly not sort of uh, no rust in the machine only only a couple of little items a couple of screws around the back I don't know if you can see that a couple of screws here and the other side have a tiny bit of surface rust on and that sort of you can take them out and sand and the springs show a little bit this more sort of powdery white stuff is normally sort of dried oil or will eventually dry after a long long period or I think it just gums up with so much dust and stuff it almost appears dry the serial number on this one as printed on the bottom is 105357 uh, and I believe I started the year in 90, um, 1951 with 99684 um, or something like that. So just doing the math, so we're making around 9,000 a month going by serial numbers. Um, particularly nice in here, sort of all metal construction, no plastic. The only almost plastic items are the, uh, or rubber, is the feet and the platen. These are normally actually in plastic, so it'll save a bit of metal, or save a bit of weight, but they feel and look like aluminium. Um, everything's very fresh on the machine, almost <laughs> like I went back into a time machine and uh, picked this one up when it was almost just a couple of years old or the, so forth. As I say, I haven't done anything to the machine. The only thing I did was to clean the hammers when I got home just to check that there was no uh, splits on the keys and uh, so forth because if if the keys if the sort of actual print face is actually damaged then you have to decide whether you can get a parts machine or so forth because no one wants to oh yeah, everything works except there's no t or u or i o u and a you know just makes typing incredibly hard and really devalues the machine you will even see machines with um, hammers missing. And that's why it's important to take a piece of paper with you. If you ever, um, I always carry a piece with me because you never know where you might see a typewriter. And a quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog, test all the keys and make sure just a general machine's working. You may be able to see it's still got its original felt lining just to sort of quiet down the machine, you know. That normally, if that gets wet at all, the normal machine, normally the machine can survive just one dousing of rain, but that will all sort of pucker up and just fall apart. And also, this is probably wall felt, and at the t from the time, and that the moths particularly love that, and you can see that all threadbare sometimes and half hanging out. More felt down the side of machines, a quite compact typewriter but I 
seen reports of weighing about 11 kilograms so um, I'll work that out into pounds and stick it up on the screen probably somewhere there but the um, only thing really wrong with this machine is as it's basically a case train machine where the all the inners are made similar than the outer casings support the inner machine and there is a rubber grommet between the corner which after 61 years has probably sort of almost disappeared so when the um, carriage pulls over it is sort of grinding ever so slightly on the edge of the machine and you may be able to see it's worn a slight mark just in there which doesn't really notice and it's not worth restoring that but what I need to do is sort of just separate the machine and put in a rubber grommet which will just lift the platen up a fraction don't need don't want to lift it up too high because then the type will appear it will almost go into if you put it up too high then it will almost go into caps but it should stay relative um, actually no it will stay relative because machine as it is a um, panel on the machine it won't actually raise a platen it will raise the inner frame so that will all be relative and fingers crossed will not upset the um, print so that's particularly sweet bell on this one quite a large bell actually a lot of um, machines had a sort of much sort of smaller bell which gives a much more sort of not a doesn't resonate so it's not a long bell but sort of yeah and that's a good two and a half second bell you know and if you sort of and that's just me flicking with the finger and all the linkages and stuff are particularly nice on this side and if we move that across we can see the um, drum escapement looks like a nylon band on that looks original I wouldn't say that's been replaced may have done sort of nylon in 1951 yeah of course with um, probably just a sort of newfangled material actually um, if that's still standing then that wouldn't need replacing and that's a big old drum to uh, turn around by hand you can imagine quite a pull weight on that um, carriage rails all look clean they're in sort of plated steel the chrome is a tiny bit of service bloom but that will come out with a chrome polish and you will take that down and it will just look like tiny pits it will protect the um, chrome and sort of rusted areas but after 61 years if that's as bad as it's got then that shouldn't really get much further so this will need I wouldn't say a full strip down and clean it will need sympathetic um, work obviously to do the rubber feet which look okay a um, little bit tricky because when they did the uh, wrinkle paint they just put it on after it was constructed so these are embedded the screw head so if you turn that it would crack and that's done to look messy so it's done to need a little bit of sort of keyhole surgery on this one to keep the condition of the machine is particularly nice it seems to have a little bit of discoloration over here but I'm betting that's just a little bit of dirt and that will sort of a light soft sponge with very very mild detergent should lift that out and won't affect the paint at all and just really clean it up so the um, carriage is a self centering one the carriage lock and the uh, all the keys it's got a lovely feel to this one when I just did a um, quick type you know nothing seized nothing has locked so I'm particularly quite happy with this requirement requirement so that's the 
Olympia SM2. Um, SM3, they omitted it from the paper table and put it on the front. Uh, SM1 is a much larger, bolder ma machine. Probably quite rare for its time, 1951. you got to remember it, and that's the war ended in 45, and uh, to sort of go out and buy a uh, German typewriter may have raised a few eyebrows, you know. Certainly, uh, there was a uh, a few English machines around then, well, Underwoods, obviously, from America. And that's why you see so many Underwoods today, especially in the UK. And to go out to a single shop to buy a single German machine, but the person may not even have known it was made in Germany. You know, it's it says it on the back, but when it's in its case, and you can put the case quite happily on the table and lift that up, then uh, they may have never known. So... The Olympia SM2, I will do more videos, um, probably when it's finished, and give it a sort of a good going over and uh, see how it performs. So, I'm a duty paid, just losing my voice, I do apologise. So, until next time, take care.